February was drawing to a close. It would be some time before the spring brought with it rays of sparkling sunshine, so the wintry morning caressed us with a chill, tingling breeze. Good morning, everyone! Seeing all of you gathered like this today makes me realize how long it's been. Makes me realize my ass, Kondo. You got any clue how long you kept us hanging out here? Calling it unrest would be an understatement at this point, you know? Men, what you may have heard is true. My absence has not only unsettled the balance here, but was partly responsible for our tragic loss in Toba Fushimi. A leader must own up to his mistakes, so please, allow me to apologize for this egregious error. A bustling, whimsical energy fluttered through the lively voices echoing all around the compounds, filling it with a well-missed warmth. The topic of discussion, of course, was the return of Isumi Kondo, the Shinsengumi's beloved chief, who had been seriously injured in Kyoto. He scanned his surroundings with thinned eyes, proudly beaming in front of his men. Welcome, chief. What is the current status of recovery for your shoulder? Lines of worry furrowed on Saito's tired face, but Kondo resolutely answered with a smile. I cannot say I am rearing to head back into the battlefield, but I can twist and turn it just fine. Or is this a challenge of some sort to assess my skill in combat? Huh, I could use the exercise. Chief, you mustn't. Dr. Matsumoto was very specific about not overexerting yourself. But, but a little bout of sparring couldn't hurt. Nope. Dr. Matsumoto made it clear, Chief, that if you go off your treatment schedule, we'll have to do whatever it takes to stop you. Hear that, Chief? Training is out of the question. Pity. I didn't think training would present too much risk. Everyone in the room smiled in response to Kondo's playful pouting, myself included. With our chief and commander back, the Shinsengumi was fully assembled for the first time in months. It was the promise of hope in a despairing time, and luckily, I wasn't the only one who'd noticed. From the corner of my eye, I watched Yamazaki leaning against the wall with a grin on his face. Hmm. The sight of Kondo returning is surely cause for celebration, right Yamazaki? Indeed. Just having him around has inspired a jubilant air amongst our troops. It is why now, more than ever, the Shinsengumi must keep the chief safe, even if it means endangering our own lives. I never once questioned if I'd chosen the right path. Yamazaki uttered a sentiment that I too shared, and with my head held high, I smiled with him. <laughs> All right, enough of the chit-chat. Let's get to business, Kondo. Ah, oh, right you are. Okay, everyone, gather round and listen up. It brings a tear to this old man's eye, seeing all of you welcome me so graciously. But I have more good news. What could it be, sir? Shimada was the first one to speak amidst the group of men murmuring quietly, prompting Kondo to respond in a pointed, stern tone of voice. As all of you are keenly aware, the Shinsengumi suffered terrible losses in our last battle. The Imperial Army has awoken, spirited by their rousing victory, and we have received word that they intend to head for Edo in days' time. Gentlemen, we have official orders to lay siege in Kofu, ambushing all of the standing forces. From henceforth, the Shinsengumi shall temporarily be named the Koyo Regulatory Company, Ambushing soldiers in Kofu. It can only mean one place for us to go. Kofu Castle. Before I continue, I just gotta say it's so nice to see the Watch Boys on screen again. Ugh, I've missed this trio. <laughs> so nice to see them all. Exactly. Entering Kofu Castle is a tricky operation, as is tackling the number of men they possess. Quite. Laying siege will be no mean feat, and will require far more manpower than we have available. With Kondo's sudden order came the influx of questions, many of which cast a doubt on the feasibility of organizing a large-scale siege. Nonetheless, Kondo answered them patiently, 
His shoulders relax in his loose-fitting clothing. Fear not, my friends. Not only has the Shogunate endorsed us with nearly unlimited funds, but they are outfitting our men with the latest weaponry. If our mission to take Oku Castle goes swimmingly, then our reward will be 10,000 Koku. <laughs> Whoa! To 10,000? Only Daimyo usually handle that much Koku. So, Chief, in other words, you're not only a Daimyo, but a Daimyo with a castle? If all goes as planned, of course. What? What? Are you serious? So, so, does that make us vassals to a lord? Whoa! Glad I picked the right group to join! <laughs> Aspirations of becoming esteemed members of society were in no short supply to the fledgling members of the Shinsengumi. It's nice to hear everyone so excited for once. Usually everyone's like, murmur, murmur, mutter, mutter. <laughs> Kondo's dreams had always burned the brightest, and the room broke into uproarious applause. The celebrations following Kondo's announcement carried on for some time, allowing us in the room to bask in the glow of his accomplishment. Nice. It's nice to see, even if it doesn't last. Afterwards, the meeting ended, and most of the men filed out of the room in positive spirits. The Shinsengumi captains tentatively remained, however, discussing the night's events with both Sanan and Heisuke included. Interesting. Koyo Regulatory Company, eh? So, in exchange for busting our balls in Koku Castle, we get 10,000 Koku. Is any of that true? Huh. <laughs> I'm sure all of us want to know. While it was going on, I bit my tongue because I didn't want to spoil the party, but... You know how the saying goes. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. Of course, the thought has crossed each of our minds, as the reward itself is rather puzzling. Especially if, this time, the order comes from the Shogunate, all of whom had publicly declared their opposition to engaging with the Imperial Army. So, they send us to Kofu to handle the dirty work, and they wash their hands of the problem, huh? Hmm. You've all made some good points. They just want us to get the hell out of here, since we're the ones who'll kick up a fuss until it fucking kills us. Regardless, though, rejecting the offer on the table is out of the question. Wait, sir. Are you implying that you intend on going through with their plan? Yup. Ulterior motive or not, chances to capture a castle like Kofu's don't come around twice. Holding ourselves up in that castle gives a damn good shot of taking it, no matter how many bastards they throw at us. Hell, we might even win the war. Ah, so for everyone on the fence about fighting, this is our signal of intent so they'll join us, huh? All of the captains began nodding to one another in solemn agreement. Thankfully, the tension seemed to ease, and the notion of hope was gradually being restored. Of course, success was no easy guarantee. But... I fully support the endeavor. It is an ample opportunity for us to reverse our fortunes. Which, as you may know, haven't been great, and the Shogunate may have taken this as an omen. So, one defeat is enough. If we can rouse our men into a decisive victory, then it's the first step in changing the opinions about our competency. Because Yamazaki contributing to discussion was such a rarity, everyone in the room fell silent. I was just thinking that. I'm like, man, Yamazaki's not one to just outright say something so confidently. <laughs> like, here's my opinion on things. No sooner after he spoke had all of them nodded in small but enthusiastic support. Well, if it were just the money we were talking about, then I would have opposed it. But if it's all part of the bigger picture, then I suppose the risk will be worth it. That is undeniable. No better alternatives come to mind at the moment. If we are going to proceed as planned, then I shall prepare the Fury Corps accordingly. Around the room, some were in strong agreement. Others remained quiet, but nodded sternly. 
Their collective murmurs hummed as Sanan curled his lips into a satisfied grin. Yay! Sanan's happy that the fury core is being used. Oh, dang! Toshi! You party pooper! Before Sanan could exit the room, however, Hijikata shook his head, beckoning his friend to stay back. Hold it, Sanan. The Fury Corps is remaining in Edo. No questions. And what good would that serve? If absolute victory is what you require, wouldn't you agree that we are the most capable outfit? Look, there's no question to what the Fury Corps is capable of, but you can't operate under sunlight, plain and simple. So, the reliability. Well, obviously marching with you isn't an option. Besides, more warriors means increased visibility, which means jeopardizing the very existence of Furies. The Fury Corps isn't leaving these compounds. Do I make myself clear, Sanon? Hijikata's expression was unwavering as he spoke. I stood fearfully off to the side, watching Sanon carefully contemplate a response with a glare. Crystal. Just as I predicted, however, you underestimate our potential for shaping history on the big stage. Sanon warped his face in sadness, curtly spinning his heel to storm away from the room. My poor old boo. The conversation amongst the captains, Hijikata and Kondo, carried on for just a little longer, but the hour was fast approaching midnight, and everyone bid farewell before retiring to their rooms. When the clock struck twelve, the only ones remaining were Hijikata, Heisuke, Yamazaki, and myself. The evening has slipped from our fingers. Where did the time go? Well, Toto and I are quite accustomed to this hour. You and the commander should get some rest soon, or tomorrow will be a struggle. <laughs> this is nothing. Actually, Heisuke, you got a minute. Hmm? What's up? I mentioned this earlier, but I plan on leaving the Fury Corps behind for our march to Kofu. While we're out, I need you to be my eyes and ears on the Furies. In other words, you're asking me to spy on Sanon. Huh. <laughs> Caught me. I'm sure you read between the lines of our conversation earlier, but Sanon's been acting real antsy lately. Suddenly, Heisuke's expression dropped. Got it. Now that you mention it, Sanon's been talking more and more about going outside. It's peculiar. Sir... Shall I work in tandem with Toto to keep watch over the Fury Corps? Actually, no. I need you to perform some espionage for me. Might be rough, but I'll need you in Kofu. Just like Shinpachi and Harada said, there is more to the story of the Shogunate offering us that castle. My guess is that it's a trap. But Yamazaki can't be in the sunlight for long. Save your concern, please. Just because I am a fury does not preclude me from carrying out my duty, much less under the sun. Sorry. With Heisuke ordered to watch after the Fury Corps, and Yamazaki joining the Koyo Regulatory Company, that left me as the only one without instructions, and Hijikata then turned to face me. Hi. So, Yukimura, as for you... Can I come? <laughs> Wait, Hijikata. I have a favor to ask of you. Before he could finish his thought, I blurted out. I was well aware of my position here. Participating in battle was out of the question, given that I was more than a burden on the field. But even so... Remaining silent was equally out of the question. Please allow me to accompany you to Kofu. Sorry, not happening. Weren't you there last time? You saw it. War isn't for the faint of heart, kid. You live by the sword, and you die by the sword. We don't say that shit for fun. Most of all, a city girl like you has no place out there. Final answer. Hijikata was interrogating me with only his eyes, as if he were culling my memories from my face. 
In fact, my hands began trem trembling uncontrollably as the battle of Toba Fushimi replayed in my head. Hearing Hijikata answer with such conviction reminded me of how little I had wanted to experience the stench and horror of that scene. But even so, beyond my fear of death and my trepidation to witness suffering beyond my imagination, there was something more pertinent pulling me to Kofu. It was? Still, I want to go. There's someone I'm worried about. <laughs> Aw, we embarrassed the bean! Oh. He immediately reacted to what I'd been getting at. Aw, he's touched! Yay! <laughs> I love it. With a troubled grin, Yamazaki darted his eyes towards me, timidly clearing his throat before facing Hijikata to speak. <clears throat> Commander, Toto, allow me to offer an opinion if I may. I too believe Yukimura would be better served joining us on the front. Seriously, Yamazaki? Chizuru can't fight! Fighting is not the key to everything. Just because one cannot fight does not mean they are useless in other facets of life. Someone wise told me this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I remember her saying that to him. <laughs> Were those my words? Am I the wise one? As if he were reading my mind, Yamazaki looked at me from his peripheral suddenly and winked. Ah, my heart! <laughs> ah, I'm a sucker for winks. I love it. Meanwhile, Toji's just glaring through all of this. <laughs> Dang youngins in love under my watch in the war times. Blah. Her contributions may differ to ours, but she is a fighter nonetheless. She cares for all our injured. In fact, during the Battle of Toba Fushimi, she saved dozens of lives with her tireless work in the infirmary. So please, Commander, allow her to join us. Yes, please. I beg of you. I promise that I won't cause any trouble. Ugh. Ugh. You know, your actual talent is in grinding my goddamn gears. But it's true. We need all the help we can get out there. Oh... Hijikata heaved a giant sigh, fed up with what I was sure he perceived as whining, and nodded at me. <laughs> you can't win against an Edo woman, man. And I'm, I'm glad that they brought up the infirmary stuff. I, I was pretty sure that was that happened on Yamazaki's route, but I couldn't remember for certain. Yeah, because she, she played a huge part in like, focusing on the doctor part of things, which I really liked. So that's cool. I hope that you can help out again in that way. Remember, I can't guarantee your safety. If that's fine with you, then come along. I will. The conversation left me feeling flushed with heat, so I entered the courtyard, allowing the refreshing breeze to cool me underneath the twilight. I wandered for a minute, noticing the blades of grass poking through the stone on the floor as I ventured back towards my bedroom. Oh. Soon I saw Yamazaki sauntering similarly around the inner yard, and I called out to him. Hey, Yamazaki. Thank you for earlier. What are you referring to? I meant about asking to include me in the caravan for Kofu. I was sure you'd be against it. Yamazaki had always expressed a dire interest in my safety, and ensured that I was always protected. For someone like me, who had always thrust herself into near-death situations accurate. I could likely credit the fact that I am still alive to Yamazaki's vigilant sense of duty, which was more than I could have ever asked for. But one question lingered in the back of my mind. It was puzzling to think that he would not only allow, but support my intention to leave for Kofu. Right. Well, um, in the past, I likely would have been totally against it. I would have thought... Who'd be foolish enough to allow her passage into such a treacherous place? Then why? Well, you said that you'd follow me anywhere, right? 
Damn. A dazzling ray of moonlight glinted beautifully on Yamazaki's profile, revealing the smirk on his face. My eyes dropped downwards, peeking at the fact that our hands were now touching one another. Stop. The cuteness. It's killing me. I was unsure if he initiated the contact or if I did. But he took the next step, interlocking his thin, slender fingers into mine. Our hands were entwined, basking in the warmth of each other's skin. I'm aware this does not bear mentioning, but we will witness all manner of atrocities in Kofu. All I can ask is that you put your all into saving lives, since I cannot do so openly in my condition. Despair gripped my heart with abandon. I hoped he wouldn't dwell on such terrible things, but I bit my tongue. No matter how much I denied it to myself, Yamazaki belonged to another realm, embedded in shadows. Instead of focusing on the negative, however, I decided to offer a more comforting sentiment. I don't think that'll be the case forever, though. If humans could be turned into Furies, then maybe one day Furies could eventually be transformed back to humans. I see. Maybe indeed. He neither confirmed nor denied my suggestion. He merely smiled, albeit faintly off to the side. It was a melancholic smile, one intended to placate me. Out of instinct, I squeezed his hand tightly, clinging to its warmth like it was life-giving. Aw, aggressive hand-holding for the win. <laughs> so beautiful. All right, and that's how we ended chapter one, with some nice hand-holding. Sweet. Ah, uh, wings and hand-holds, oh my. I love it. All right, we'll have to check our stats. See where we're at. Oops, that's the wrong one. That's the right one. We're budding, apparently, with, despite the winks and stuff. Okay. March 1st, 1868. Thick blankets of snow covered the icy ground, but the Shinsengumi, now named the Koyo Regulatory Company, plowed through them en route to Kofu. I, however, was stuck in my own head far too often. My biggest concern was that our soldiers, numbering in the region of 200 strong, were hurriedly gathered together, unused to rigid military standards. Most of the men, out of an eagerness to fill their empty pockets with cash, lacked the skill, decorum, and morale befitting warriors of the Shinsengumi. Cash? Was cash a thing back then? Hmm, I'm curious now. If it were enough to get us into the castle, I thought, then all we would need to do is hold it, never mind having to engage in a full-scale conflict in Kofu. Nevertheless, I found it impossible to shake these worrisome thoughts during our convoy's travels. Days had passed since we last caught sight of Edo, and the Koyo Regulatory Company trudged along. My eyes meandered on the snow, which neatly covered areas around tree trunks and boulders, despite all the grass. Oh, there you guys are! Hey! Miss Yukimura! Huh? Hey! Aw, he came to show off his new clothes! That is so cute! Aw. <laughs> I love it. Look over here! <laughs> I look good, don't I? Nomura, before showing off your new uniform, don't you think you should warn her first? Pardon his rudeness. I'll be sure to scold him for acting with such exuberant disrespect later on. Oh, I don't mind at all, but... Um, when did all of you change uniforms? Oh, the commander ordered us to wear them. Told us to get used to wearing western-styled uniforms. Alongside the change in name, the Shinsengumi underwent a major aesthetic change as well. It was reflective of this new era, a shift that truly marked the step in becoming the Koyo Regulatory Company. Their new uniforms were sleek and stylish, forming to its wearer's body with a tight black fabric. 
Speaking to them from afar led me to believe that I was conversing with someone I'd never met before. Hmm. There's something the matter, Yukimura. Oh no, just adjusting to the sight. Everyone looks so different. Huh. I myself have yet to get accustomed to them. My, the times sure are changing, aren't they? The only exceptions, I suppose, are you and the chief. And... Yamazaki. True. In fact, I was asking Yamazaki earlier if he was going to change his uniform, but he said... I operate in the shadows. What purpose do I have in altering my appearance? It's for me. Tight black fabric, Yamazaki. Can show you off real nice. I like that Sanan was like, I don't care if I operate in the shadows, gimme. <laughs> uh, and then they just bullied Heisuke into wearing his. He seemed a little opposed to the idea. In all honesty, I was a little disheartened. It was a tad selfish of me, but I was convinced that Yamazaki would have looked incredibly handsome in it, given his slender figure. I agree. Shimada must have caught on to my disappointment, forming a playful smirk with his lips. <laughs> well, when the war's over, why don't you choose something more appropriate for him? Me? Pick out his clothes? Sure. Between you and me, he would be thrilled to know that you've picked it out for him. Thanks, Shimada. I love it. It had been quite some time since I meddled in trends related to fashion, so my confidence in the latter was rather lacking. Shimada was nudging me with his friendly smile, and I couldn't help but purse my lips in contemplation. I wondered to myself, what sort of clothes did men look best in? I love it, she's asking all the guys for fashion advice. She doesn't even think about like the implications of picking clothes for Yamazaki, she's just like, I gotta give this some serious thought. I gotta get my guy some new threads. Hey, Soma, Namora, if someone were to pick out your clothes for you, what do you think you'd want? Me? Hmm. First and foremost, it needs to be functional. First, I'd need headgear, probably a chest plate, and maybe some kind of chainmail under the plate. Well, I, of course, would want something flashy, but not too flashy to intimidate my enemies. Hmm. Neither of their opinions were helpful, as was expected. <laughs> Saito, you know fashion. <laughs> Come help me out here. I hear far more lively conversation on this side. Oh, Saito. I apologize if we were being too loud or disruptive. At ease. Being alert is one thing, but it would do us no good to let it consume us either. But enough with the pleasantries. Yamazaki should be returning from his scouting mission shortly. I gulped, imagining how awkward it would have been had Yamazaki overheard our conversation. But... Just then, as if summoned by serendipity, the subject of our conversation appeared from the tip of the trail. Hello, Yamazaki. How'd everything go? Mm. Yamazaki? You look grave. What did you see? I have bad news. Everyone immediately froze. Yamazaki curtly averted his gaze, purposely restraining himself as he delivered his news in a hushed tone. The Imperial Army beat us to it. They have already seized and taken control of Kofu Castle. Dun, dun, dun. As the words were uttered from Yamazaki's mouth, they spread through our ranks like wildfire. The captains attempted to maintain order despite the demoralizing revelation, but it was to no avail. Information discussed by the company's war council must have leaked all the way to Kofu Castle. To our dismay, the Imperial Army had already declared themselves king of the proverbial hill. With our original plan out the window, we were tasked with laying siege to a fully armed castle. New recruits, who expressed an interest in joining only after believing victory was more than assured, caught wind of this news and fled the marching ranks. 
By the time Kondo had been notified, over half of his men had shamelessly absconded. Meanwhile, he was occupied in his hometown performing meet and greets. Our standing army, which was measly from the outset, dwindled to an embarrassing shadow of its former self. Misfortune was becoming commonplace for us, and suddenly our mission seemed all the more insurmountable. If you thought taking that castle was tough, it's even harder without the right men. Victory's looking slim. We're gonna need more men, so I'm heading to Edo to request backup. If they comply, we might have a shot. Hijikata declared his intent to gather reinforcements, which left us in a precarious state without his leadership. Nonetheless, Yamazaki and I saw Hijikata off after accompanying him while he packed his belongings. Do you plan on traveling to Edo alone? At the very least, you should have a bodyguard with you. We've got neither the horses nor the men to spare. Don't sweat it. I'll be back before you know it. Listen to me. Don't let a single bullet fire until I get back, you hear me? This war doesn't start unless I will it so. Understood, sir. However, there's a chance that the enemy may preemptively attack us, should they learn that we are short in numbers. Ugh. Hijikata's eyes thinned. Behind his squinted eyelids, I saw the glint of a frigid, purposeful anger. In the event of that occurring, you take Kondo, flee to Edo, and protect him with your life. Got it? What? The mood immediately recalled something that Hijikata had imparted upon us during Toba Fushimi. He snapped at us, telling us to stand down when our backs were against the wall despite all of our comrades also fighting for their lives. Hijikata should have known then, and even now, how much Yamazaki was hurt by his insistence. So are you actually asking Yamazaki to abandon his allies if push comes to shove? No one's abandoning anyone, but Kondo is the priority. That isn't up for debate. Why? Hopefully Yamazaki had the intuition not to take Hijikata's orders personally. It was difficult given the circumstances, but Yamazaki obeyed every command. But the thought of leaving his closest allies behind to keep one person safe hadn't sat well with Yamazaki, who shifted his eyes nervously in response. Hijikata, however, looked totally unfazed, glancing upwards at the sky indifferently. I couldn't care less if people hate me. No one's bigger than the Shinsengumi, and that's what's at stake. Hate me all you want, Yamazaki. You're perfectly entitled to your feelings. No, sir. As I've said to you before, the chief must survive, even at the cost of the men to his left and to his right. He must lead. Commander, if you are going to lead the Shinsengumi as its demon, then I will assist the Shinsengumi as its shadow. My fate has been decided, as I am a fury. In the future, my name will amount to less than a footnote. In order to preserve the Shinsengumi, to honor its name, I must be willing to give my life for it. Yamazaki. Apologies, Yukimura. The path ahead of me is an arduous one, which bodes rather poorly for you and your desire to follow me. No, it's okay. You should do what you feel is best, Yamazaki. The two of us nodded, exchanging our unspoken sentiments before turning back to Hijikata. Commander, I will do as you command. You have my word that the chief will be kept safe. Thanks, and sorry. As you were, Yamazaki. Yukimura. <laughs>